Hey guys, so today we're going to go over 3D animated models. Sorry if I sound a bit tired, but I basically just woke up. Uh, anyways, I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials lately, like this one. So here we have um, a projectile launcher, and uh, when you right-click it, you can see this kind of cool animation sequence go up. And uh, especially for this one, it kind of like, it holds at a certain point and kind of loops and then goes back. Now I could have done a lot more frames, but this is specifically for... Um, a server, I'm updating a resource, uh, everything, so basically I just want to um, make it lightweight but still usable, so three frames seems uh, reasonable to me. But we're going to go over how to do and as many frames as you want and uh, all that good stuff, so I'm going to hop into a blank world so that you can kind of see from scratch. So here we are in the command world, there's a few key um, components to this model animating so you can do it with entities or you can do it with the player entities is a lot easier but the player um you know obviously most people want to see this with the player so i'm going to summon an armor stand right up here and i'm going to give it uh let's see armor items and we're going to give it a uh we're going to give it a item on its head and it's going to get an id that is a stick, and it's gonna have a count of 1B, and we're gonna have a custom model data, 100000000. Zero, 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 zero. And there we go. So now when I click this, it's going to, uh, if I put on a certain resource pack, uh, custom the zero, 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 zero. Um, oh, tag. You have to have the word tag. And we're going to spawn him on top of this block. So I'm going to click that, and now I have Steve. So I'm going to show two examples. I'm going to show you the uh, thingy uh, animation, and then I'm also going to show you this armor stand animation. So the armor stand animation is a lot easier. So we're going to need three models that have different movement uh, to them. So I'm going to go into this resource pack. I'm going to go to Assets, Minecraft, and you're going to need to make a new resource pack. I have a video called, uh, on custom model data tutorial, so I'm just going to breeze through this, but you'll see some of the things that you'll need. So you need models, item, and then you're going to need whatever item is going to have the uh, custom model data to it, because you don't want to replace an item. You just want to make it so when you have a certain tag, it shows up, which is nice. So once we hop into here, you can see kind of how it's laid out. Um, you have... Uh, what the original item is when it's not uh, custom model data and then you have the custom model data and what model it paths to what folder it paths to um, so this number can be any number between one and I think like a billion or nine billion uh, nine 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 um, so I use extra zeros to help me figure out what it is so the first two numbers here is what animation uh, type it is and then the next two is the frame uh, so this references a model called item motion still steve right uh, and then this one is one of the frames uh, this is walk steve frame is zero and it's zero one zero zero walk steve frame one is zero one zero one and so on so now that we know those we can simply just go uh, slash data modify entity at e type equals armor stand sort uh, limit equals one sort equals nearest now uh, you can put these selectors anywhere and add s and move around with that I have other videos on how to mess with selectors this is just a quick way to prototype but I wouldn't do this for an actual data pack I would uh, you tag that entity and then do execute as all the tagged entities but anyways so we're going to mess with their uh, armor items at three dot tag dot custom model data and we're going to set the value to one zero one zero 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 zero. So that's the first frame of the walk, and you can see that. Uh, so we're going to put that right here, and we're going to put this right here, and we're going to make it the original standing still. And then we're going to put one more uh, that has uh, zero one. So this is the next frame. Uh, now the way that I made these models, I used Cubic uh, Blockbench, and they have a player model editor. Uh, you can only get rotations of 
uh, 0.5 accuracy or something like that. Uh, well, 22.5 accuracy or 45 degrees. So this will just go boop like that. Like that's that's the most accuracy I can get. I can make it swing higher, but player models don't really swing higher. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about how to do this animation. So this animation is really easy. You just have to constantly be changing their model data with some timing in between if you were to do some kind of data pack. I'm not covering how to do commands in scoreboards and cooldowns and like because there's a lot of things in it. I'm just showing you how to do it with the... Uh, the basic idea and uh, how to do it in the resource pack. So you're just going to need to create each model and uh, in Blockbench and then export it to a .json and put it in your folder directories uh, and you need one for each frame of the model. There's ways to animate a model and I showed a video before, but if, if it's an animated model, like an, the item is just animating on its own, then you can't control the frame. So you can't make it so, like if I hold the shooty thingy uh, and uh, then I have it animated automatically as its own model, then I it's not going to go when I click. It's gonna just constantly animate. Um, so this you need separate models if you want to have good control over the frames. So this is how to do that. So this is for an armor stand. Now for a player, I'm going to need to give myself a carrot on a stick with a custom model data of one zero 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 zero, right? Uh, that's this one. Eh, take one down. All right, pass it around, and there we go. And then I guess I'll go into here and figure out. Uh, so I'm going to go into the resource pack. So again, you just need to have a custom model data. Uh, special file that tells the item that you're changing what it should look like and then notice how I have this ID is for scar and then the one at the end denotes what frame it is so uh, if I give it to me like this with the right number I will have this weapon uh, so now when I hold it you'll notice something interesting you see this this is like a little trick so the thing is really high up and you may be wondering why so I basically gave myself one that has a really high um, attack speed, uh, negative attack speed modifier. So, so here we are on um, MC Stacker, and I'm just going to go to Carrot on a Stick, and I'm going to go to Modifiers, Add Attribute Modifier. So this is the trick to get animating in the player working really well. So we make their attack speed, negative one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And when you're holding it in, you can pick as many as you want. Uh, it could be any if you want, that's okay. So copy this, paste this into here, and then we'll add custom model data. And then we're gonna take this number. Okay, so now when I hold the item, it will have it will have none of like notice how this bobs. You don't want the bobbing. So this will see did not bob. So what you need to do in your model is you need to go into it and you need to mess with the value down at the very bottom uh, where it says uh, all this stuff. So what you need to do is the first person left and right hand needs to have see this number here this is your y translation you need to make it big so normally it's not 10 10 is actually going to shift this thing up high so i usually just add 10 to it and that's typically good enough so you get it looking how you want in your editor however you use it cubic studios has a pretty good uh, model alignment to see where it's going to be um and then you just add 10 to it and that should be enough um so this is this is just one of them right and i can hide those modifiers and what I can do to change this, that's that's the real trick. That's one that people sometimes don't get. So if you're going to use it, you have to have it in your main hand. And if you're going to have it in your main hand, you have to right click it. So there's a couple good things we can assume here. So if I have a shulker box, then I can put the shulker box down. I can go data modify block. So when they click, I can do data modify block items set from entity at s selected item. Uh, and that, oh, whoa, 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 we need these brackets. There we go. So now it copies it into there. 
So we're going to build up a sequence of commands, which obviously you can put into a function, um, and I wouldn't do with specific coordinates. Anyway, data remove block. So first you want to remove the items in there so that it's fresh, so you don't accidentally duplicate and get free stuff. Uh, so then you do that, and then you do this, which copies it, and now you can mess with it. So it's very similar to the old way now. So you can do data modify, uh, data modify block uh, items at zero dot tag dot custom model data set value. And we need this value here with a one at the end. Uh, items at zero dot tag dot custom model data set value and one so this will take it to the next animation frame so we're going to just go like that uh, okay so then that does the next anim that just changes what custom model data is so it changes the frame and now you have to give it back to the player so now this is where a custom loot table t kicks in i have a video in my slash loot tutorial or in the starter data pack in the description um, where basically there is a loot table that uh, let me go here uh, let's go to data packs let's go to starter pack there is a special loot table here and keep in mind that you should delete things you're not going to use like the spawner loot table they're just examples um, but this loot table says if you have drop contents true on a tool when you break a shulker box it does not drop it drops the items contents not the shulker box itself so now we can just do uh, slash loot replace entity at p uh, weapon dot main hand because you know it's in the main hand because they clicked it and that's the only time this works so you mine that with a stick that has drop contents true and uh, naturally that's going to do that so i need to do data pack enable file slash starter pack just so that it will have the loot table and just like that um at p it would be at s if it was in a command block Okay, so now you're gonna see this move. Uh, wait, I should definitely put a pressure plate so that you don't uh, get distracted by what's going on there. So let me go like this. There you go. You can see it move up a little bit. Um, and you can just do this with and do each frame you load a new one. So this is the correct set of things you can do. There's other ways to reword this so you don't have to remove it before, but I just remove it anyway to be safe. So remove items from the shulker box that you have set in your world somewhere. Then you copy the uh, selected item into the shulker box. Then you modify whatever data that item has, and then you loot it back to the player's main hand. And you just keep doing that with these um, uh, attack speed to make fluid animations in the uh, player's inventory. So those are the two methods to uh, the two different things you have to do to do two different types of animation. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. I'm going to be doing a couple more tutorials in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.